Hello and welcome to the presentation MVH Analysis and Simulation of Automotive E-Axles. Presentation will be held by Mr. Davide Marano, Senior Gear Engineer at Gear Transmission Solutions, and by Mr. Timo Giese, Technical Director at Function Bay Munich. Let me first introduce the agenda of this talk. We will start discussing the actual e-powertrain architectures. Then we will go on by presenting the theory fundamentals of order analysis for automotive e-axles. Then, with regard to a case study e-axle, the design and optimization of gearing for MVH by using Keysoft is first introduced. And finally, the multibody simulation in Recordine by using the drivetrain toolkit interface is presented. The automotive industry is continuously developing new electrified powertrain architectures and vehicle technologies to optimize vehicle fuel consumption and reduce carbon dioxide and other pollutant emissions to withstand the regulations. Some of the main drivers of powertrain electrification are the improved efficiency of the architectures, the displacement of fossil fuel as a primary energy source, the reduced impact on the environment, at least at the site of utilization, and the reduced cost of fueling. The e-powertrain architectures are generally classified according to hybrid functions and on the electric machine connection point, as we'll explain in the next slides. If the electric machine is connected with the internal combustion engine through a belt on the front-end accessory drive, it will be named P0. If instead the electric motor is connected directly with the crankshaft of the internal combustion engine, the configuration is named P1. In both cases, electric driving is not possible. The configuration is named P2 if the electric machine is side attached through a belt or integrated between the internal combustion engine and the transmission, while if the e-machine is integrated in the hybrid transmission, the configuration is named 2.5. In both cases, the e-motor provides boosting for improved acceleration, recuperation and start and stop functionality. Furthermore, pure electric driving is enabled in certain driving situations. In P3 architecture, the electric machine is connected through a gear mesh with the transmission. The electric machine is decoupled from the internal combustion engine and its speed is a multiple of the wheel speed. Then last but not least, in P4 configuration, the electric machine is connected through a gear mesh on the rear axle of the vehicle. In this case, the electric machine is decoupled from the internal combustion engine and it's located in the rear axle drive or in the wheels hub. The sound of vehicle's electric axles is the result of the high frequency whining noise generated by electromagnetic forces of motors, gear meshing frequencies of transmissions, bearing frequencies as well as the high frequency noise generated by the DCAC converters. The spectrum of any electric axle shows a range of frequencies related to gear mesh frequency. The fundamental gear mesh frequency is calculated as the product of the number of teeth of a pinion and its respective shaft frequency. The amplitude of gear meshing frequency is usually related to the transmitted load Thus, the vibration analysis of the axle should be conducted at the maximum power. Sidebands around the gear mesh frequency are quite common due to gear faults such as wear, defects, misalignment and eccentricity. The vibrations related to the bearings can be either tonal or broadband. Tonal vibrations in new bearings are generally caused by production imperfections including but not limited to the cases when the stiffness of both inner and outer rings is not ideal and they get ovalized due to the clamping for grinding. Broadband vibrations originate from the defects of raceways and rolling element imperfections. A smooth operation is just expected when bearings are new. The SKF company has published a comprehensive analysis of bearing damage and failure modes and a guide to the interpretation of vibration signal. The noise of an electric motor is caused by the electromagnetic force in the air gap, exciting the stator and the motor casing. The electromagnetic force can be decomposed in a tangential force generating the e-motor torque 
and the radial force responsible for the e-motor noise, which does not affect the operation of the e-motor. The electromagnetic excitation force is influenced by the design parameters of the electric motor, such as the motor topology, number of poles and slots, the shape of the poles and slots, the shape of the current, and several other parameters. I will now introduce the design and optimization of gearing for MBH using Keysoft. We will start by sizing the center distance and phase width for each individual gear stage. Then we'll have to find out the optimal microgeometry of the meshing, so module, pressure angle, helix angle, and so on. As we'll use case hardened gears for E axles, we'll have probably some distortions after hardening, so we may also design a grinding stock for a hard finishing process. And in order to avoid grinding notches, a proper sizing of the cutter must be performed. Then we'll perform the calculation of the system deformation, and this will influence the gear's contact pattern. So in order to optimize the gear contact pattern along the flank width, we'll design some micro modifications such as helix angle and crowning. After we have optimized the contact pattern, we can start phasing the MVH optimization of the transmission. Okay, so what is the idea of rough sizing? The idea is to fix the main parameters as center distance and tooth width of the gear transmission that will of course influence the housing dimensions. As input we have of course torque and speed, so the power, uh, the gear ratio, the gear material and gear quality, and also the required safety factors and the required life. The goal of the rough sizing is to find the optimal center distance and phase width in order to define the gearbox dimensions. In this case, the choice of the optimal solution strongly depends on the defined targets. Several options are possible. In this study, we focused on maximum power density solution. The basic idea of fine sizing is to get in with a fixed tooth width and a center distance range and to find out the optimal gear microgeometry. To do this, we can fix some module range, pressure angle range, helix angle range, maybe we do not want too high helix angle due to the axial forces on the bearings. And very important for MDH, we can fix some target contact ratio. Again, multiple targets are possible. We can find a solution with higher safety factors or low weight, or for example, for MDH, we can choose to have high contact ratio gears and so low noise excitation, or we can have high efficiency solution. Due to time reasons, I cannot describe the whole design roadmap, but I invite you to see the e-mobility seminar done by Mr. Iliad Sikor, which is available on Keysoft website. Among several concepts for e-mobility, we choose as case study the two-stage cylindrical gearbox. The design and the optimization of the transmission was performed in Keysoft. We compare two different gear sets, the first with low contact ratio and the second with high contact ratio. The simulations are carried out for performance improvement evaluation of the high contact ratio gears with respect to the low contact ratio gears regarding the peak-to-peak -peak transmission error, the gear meshing and the bearing forces. We then perform the multibody simulation in Recordine in order to obtain the dynamic performances of our transmission and to show the equivalent radiated power of the housing compared from high contact ratio gears and low contact ratio gears. I will now give the floor to Mr. Timo Giza, who will explain you the modeling procedure we adopted to build the Recordine model. Let's have a look on the components of a multibody system to fulfill the requirements of an NVH simulation. We start with the housing, which mainly provides static and dynamic compliance and it also serves as a resonator. From the modeling point of view, the rigid body description of a classical MBS is not suitable in the NVH simulations. So we first can transform our rigid body into a finite element body by using a mesh discretization. The simulation quality is ideal if the mesh is good conditioned but the simulation time is that high that this approach is only suitable for small structures or 2D meshes. The classical approach to solve the large simulation time is to transform the finite element body into a modal space. The quality of the results are directly dependent on the number of modes we use in the simulation. For complex housing, this model approach is the recommended way. The next machine component which needs a closer look are the bearings. 
The modeling method used is mainly dependent on the system level, the availability of the required data, the quality of the results compared to the needed computing time, and the experience of the user. The significant uh, physical effects we need for the NVH simulations are the compliance, the damping and friction, and the displacement transmission. In general, we can separate between joint approaches, force and contact approaches. Due to the high simplification, the joints are not recommended. Also, the contact model based on finite element approach is, due to the high solving time, not suitable for our task. In the next slides, we want to have a look on a simple comparison of the different modeling types available in Racketine. Our test is a 6004 bearing. So we can have a comparison of a bearings map model, curves are plotted in black, provided by the manufacturer. As these are the data from the manufacturer, they are the reference for us. We compare a simple linear bushing element in yellow, a full 6x6 matrix force in green, a non-linear bushing in gray, and an MBS contact model in red. In the test we fix the outer ring to the ground and apply a constraint motion to the inner ring. We compare the reaction forces on the outer ring. As we look in actual direction, we can uh, see that uh, the linear bushing and the matrix force don't follow the reference, as linear models don't include the clearance. On radial load, the effects of the clearance is less, so in the linear bushing is now also in a tolerable range. Only the matrix force is not aligned. That's caused on the fact that matrix forces need to be extracted on a certain working point. As soon as we combine actual and radial load, the nonlinear bushing is not longer comparable to the reference as the degrees of freedom are not coupled in this model. As a final test, we also apply a rotational displacement. And now we can see that only the MBS contact model is following the reference. So as a result, we can say that the contact model, as well as the higher force elements, as the bearings map is, are suitable for a combined load. So it's nice that we can build up models solving such complex behavior. The problem is how we can get the data. The manufacturer only provides the outer geometry, but there is a possibility to approximate the inner geometry needed by a recalculation of the load ratings. This is an optimization and we want to check how good this approximation can be. So first we make a reverse engineering made on the catalog. The error on the radial load compared to the bearings map model is 6.48%. The first optimization is to add the number of rolling elements. A Google picture search is quite good for this. The error now is reduced to 2.18%. That's almost very good. But as we want to be more precise, we can cut off the outer ring and add the roller diameter directly. The error now is reduced to 0.8%. So as a conclusion, beside a manufacturer model, a good MBS contact model is suitable for the simulation. In Rekadine, there is also a Kisoft base force element with the whole library from Kisoft integrated. So the user don't need to uh, do the approximation by himself. The results are the same between case of force element and the MBAS contact model. So this uh, solution can also be recommended. Finally, we want to have a look at the gear contact. Possible modeling types for rigid bodies are general contacts based on the geometry, an analytical involute contact, and force elements, as there is a co-simulation with Kisoft and a pre-calculated higher force element based on the meta model. For flexible gears, we can now use a node contact. Gears are used as transmission elements, but can also excite vibrations due to the tooth mashing. In the simulation, we want to cover the deflection based on a local flattening, tooth bending, and the deformation of the gear body. As a test, we use two meshing gears with only rotational degrees of freedom. The bigger gear is also uh, treated with a motion, which is zero while loading a torque, and then rotates about a few degrees. We observe the force in radial y direction of the revolute joint. First, on the general geometry contact, we can see that during the contact changes, we see some uh, noise. This is caused uh, to the discretization. The effect can be reduced uh, and prevented uh, by good settings. Nevertheless, the model has uh, the potential to excite the system by numerical effects. 
The problems on these effects is that it's nearly impossible to separate new, uh, numerical from real noise. The model covers uh, the local deflection but has no tooth bending and no wheel body deformation. Next is the involute contact. That's an analytical gear contact, so it should uh, be noise free. During the simulation you can directly see the shocks when the gear contact is changing from one tooth to another. The model covers local deflection but also no tooth bending and no deformation of the wheel body. The most time consuming calculation is the next. Here the two gear bodies are transformed uh, to a finite element model. As we can see the results are quite noisy as the contact was not optimized. The problem on the finite element uh, simulation uh, for gear contact is that we need a very dense measure to cover the microgeometry of the gears. As we want to make a whole transient simulation with several rotations, uh, the whole body must be mesh dense. Also the contact is due to the nodal representation not ideal and tends to have a contact noise. But this uh, model covers all three effects, local flattening, tooth deformation and wheel deformation. Between the noise we can see a more complex stiffness change uh, than we uh, see in the analytic involute contact. So we might suspect uh, that the gear contact is more complex uh, than observed by now. Next we co-simulate with Kisoft. And as suspected in the finite element model, we now can see that we have a more complex behavior than just the shift in the stiffness. We also see the contact shocks are caused on uh, the tooth bending while rolling over the line of action. This model covers all wanted effects of local flattening, tooth bending and gear body deformation. The co-simulation time is due to the communication quite long. But as the gears are periodical elements, we can uh, use a um, pre-simulation to generate a complex meta-model, which can be used in the simulation. The results are the same as in the co-simulation. So also local flattening, tooth bending and gear body deformation is, con is covered. For the simple test case, we uh, can only uh, extract rotation penetration dependency. But as we need to cover all six degrees of freedom, we can also add distance error, axial offset, twist and tilts. These simulations are already supported from V9R2, and the first meta models were used from V8R5. Okay, that was the theoretical part, and now we switch back uh, to Davide Marano for the final simulation results. Thank you, Mr. Giza. I will now introduce the main features of the Recudine model of the case study Axel and then shortly present the results. The model is composed by cylindrical helical gears, and the Kisoft Recudine gear metamodel approach has been adopted to study the gear contact analysis. Bearings are modeled including the internal geometry, and the reduced flexible approach has been adopted for the housing. In the next slides, I will shortly present the main results of the multibody model. We start comparing the dynamic transmission error for low contact ratio gears with respect to high contact ratio gears. As predicted by theory, high contact ratio gears show lower peak-to-peak -peak amplitudes of the transmission error and its harmonics. Also with regard to gear meshing forces, high contact ratio gears show a better behavior than low contact ratio gears. We will expect then a lower excitation of the housing coming from high contact ratio gears. This is confirmed also by the equivalent radiated power plot of the housing. High contact ratio gears show a significant reduction of emission values. By the equivalent radiated power, it's also possible to identify the critical areas for the design of the housing. Concluding by using gear metamodel toolkit of Recruitine, which is experiencing the power of both Keysoft and Recruitine software, it's possible to have a very detailed analysis of the noise and vibration harshness behavior of an automotive axle. Thank you for watching this presentation. I would be very glad to answer to any kind of questions at my email address. Have a nice day at the Recruitine experience.